In this video I'm going to teach you how to write um, certain algebraic fractions as partial fractions. This can be useful when we're working out the sums of some sequences and it's also useful when we're trying to integrate some algebraic fractions. When we write a fraction as a partial fraction, we're essentially writing as a collection of lower order fractions. So the first thing that we need to do is to factorise the denominator if it's not been done already of our um, fraction that we've got. And the thing is, is we're not actually bothered at this stage what the numerator is. Now the one I've got here is almost factorised already, but of course this can be written as x plus 3, x minus 3. And then for each factor not raised to a power, we write it with a numerator that is one order less. So this one here is x minus 3. Well, that's linear, so we just put a constant. Then we've got x plus 3, which is linear, so we just put a constant. And then we've got this cubic term. And so the order that's one less than the cubic is quadratic. So we've got cx squared, dx and e. Now these have got different letters because they can be different values, and we've just got to find out what they are. And then for each um, factor raised to a power, in this case I've got this factor x plus 1 raised to the power 3, we write it with every power less with a numerator of one order less. So the um, this is order 1, so an order less is just going to be a constant. So we've got x plus 1 cubed, the highest power, um, under the constant, and then we've got a constant over x plus 1 squared, so that's just 1 power less, plus h over x plus 1, and that's the bottom power. Now typically you're not going to get a question as complicated as this, because it just ends up being a lot of work showing the same skill over and over again, but this is the sort of thing that we can solve using the method that I'm going to demonstrate in the next few slides. In this example we're going to look at a technique where we can zero the factor parts of our answers. You'll see what I mean just now. So first of all on this one we have to factorise the denominator and we get this. And because these are all um, order 1 we're going to write each of those factors um, under a constant. So we get that our original fraction here can be written in the form a over x, b over x plus 2, plus c over 3x minus 2. Okay, so now what we always do after we've worked out this form here is we multiply through by this um, denominator here. Now let's remember that that is the same as this. So when we multiply this by this term, the x cancels and we're left with a times x plus 2, 3x plus 2, and then we get the b term and the c term here. So what do we mean by zero in the factors? Well what we do is we're going to pick a value for x so that one of these brackets goes to zero. So let's pick x equals zero. Now if x equals zero, that b that x, is, that x is going to be 0, so that b term is 0, that c term is 0, and we're just left with on this side the answer 4, on this side, tied, 2 times minus 2 is minus 4a, so a must equal negative 1. So now let's pick another value for x, let's go for x equals negative 2, because that makes the x plus 2 term 0, which makes this 0, makes this 0, so we're just left with this one here, then we're left with 8 from this side is 16b from this side, so that means b equals a half. Now we can either pick a value from here, we could pick x equals um, 2 thirds and that term would be 0, that would be 0. But if we don't want to deal with the fractions, we can now, because we've got 2 of our 3 terms, we can pick any value. So I'm just going to pick x equals 1 and we end up with 5 equals, well this lot here. and. Now if we just multiply everything by 2, then we'll add 6, divide by 3 and cancel it down, we get c equals 5 over 2. We're now going to put these three values back into this expression here, and we've got minus 1 over x, 1 over 2, x plus 2, plus 5 over 2, 3x minus 2. 
So now we're going to look at an example where we actually have some direct cancellation. And that's always going to occur when we have a higher order factor. So this is already factorised, so we're going to get it in the form ax plus b over x squared plus 1, because remember this is order 2, so this needs to be order 1, and x plus 4 over c. We're now going to multiply by this uh, denominator on the left hand side, and we get this expression here. So what we're going to do is we're going to let x equal negative 4, because we really like to get rid of this term here. So if that becomes 0, this all goes, and we're left with... Well, we'll get 40 minus 20 plus 6 equals 17c, so c equals 2. And now we're going to use direct cancellation. We're just going to let x equal 0 to get rid of this a term. And then we're only left with b's and c's, and we already know what c is. So we end up with 6 equals 4b plus c, so b must equal 1. To get our third term, well, we can just put we can't put in the value of x that cancels any of this out, so we can just use any value we like. And I typically, when given a choice, like to pick x equals one because it tends to be simpler. And we get this expression here. Now remember, we know the value of c is two, so this becomes four, and we know this is one, so we end up with this expression. And we solve that, we get a equals one. We now put these values back in, and we end up with x plus one over x squared plus 1 plus 2 over x plus 4. Okay, so for our last example we're going to look at a denominator with um, factors raised to a power. And if you remember we need this power, the power 1 less and the power below that one as well. They're all um, just constants here because this is linear. So just like all the others we're going to multiply by x plus 1 cubed and it's clear that if we pick x equals negative 1 that this term's going to go, this term's going to go and we get 7 equals a or a equals 7. I can't pick a value now that's simply going to get rid of things so I'm just going to pick any value um, for x and that will give me an expression that I can use um, in a pair of simultaneous equations. So let's go for x equals 1 and we end up with 7 equals a which is 7 plus 2b plus 4c. Well we're going to end up with 2b plus 4c is 0 and if we rearrange that we get b equals minus 2c. So now let's pick another value. 0 is always a nice one to go through because loads of things disappear. We end up with 5 equals a plus b plus c. But remember we know that b equals minus 2c so we've got the 7 there so that's going to take that to the other side is minus 2 minus 2c plus c is minus c so c must equal 2. Remember if c equals 2 that means that b must be negative 4 and if we put these values back in we get the um, fraction here in partial fraction form. In the description below you can find a link to a worksheet that has questions that you can try on your own. I hope you found this video helpful. Stay in Infield with Winfield.